So finally, uh, hi everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Uh, my name is John Sim and I'll be your host for today's webinar. Uh, before we begin, some practical information. Uh, this session will be recorded for the purpose of sharing it on our YouTube channel, so it may help you and others um, as a guide later. A tip, uh, I recommend you all to subscribe to our YouTube channel uh, because it will help you uh, to not to miss any of the content we upload there. Uh, we, you will also be able to interact with our guests and ask your questions related to the program at the end at the Q&A function on Zoom at the end of this webinar. Uh, we have an extremely uh, challenging and important topic to discuss today, which is cybersecurity. Uh, we will discuss its importance, its need of time, and how our engineering school is going to help you to unlock your career in it with a master's degree. As we all can agree that digitalization of our society has led to an increased focus on cybersecurity, and especially the fourth industrial revolution, uh, represents a fundamental change we, in the way we live, we work, uh, we relate to each other. Naturally, in contrast, it has created a significant demand for skilled professionals who can effectively address the ever-growing threats uh, posed by cyber attacks and breaches. So this is an interesting topic, and so you need to be stay tuned to learn more and dig deeper into it. Let's welcome our guest, Dr. Eric Bergstrom. Welcome, Eric. How are you doing? I'm fine, thanks. Um, yeah, it's uh, we, we just talked about the weather. Normally, we do that in in the, in Sweden. We talked about yeah. the the mystery. It could be better. It could be more more sun and less snow. I think exactly. So uh, we 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 are having a snow today. So that that is what we were discussing. Um, and but it it becomes more beautiful after snow. I must agree on that. I agree. I mean, if you if there is sun. Um, yeah. And I mean, if it is cold, normally the sun comes out and uh, it, yeah. it's a little bit brighter. But uh, today it's uh, both gray and uh, and snowy. Not not the best. <laughs> so I, I have prepared some uh, really exciting questions for you that uh, can really help our potential students understand the topic cybersecurity and our program in depth and its uniqueness. All right. Um, so, so to begin with it, um, can you please tell us about yourself, who you are, and what inspired you to lead the cybersecurity program? Yes, sure. Uh, like you said, my name is Eric Bergström, and uh, I'm uh, an assistant professor in computer science here at the School of Engineering. Uh, mm -hmm. I've been uh, working here in Jönköping for yeah, close to five years. I started in 2019, just before the pandemic. But uh, I worked in uh, another university before, so I have quite long experience of working in the university sector. But but I also, I mean, have some industrial experience. I, I, I started my career working as a system administrator. I also had my own company for, I mean, within the area of uh, IT management. So I think, really, I have to go back to being a student uh, mm -hmm. to, to answer that question, I think. I mean, I, I started to study software engineering uh like uh, 25 years ago or something like that more than that and uh and um i i always felt that uh i mean programming and so on was fun i studied programming mathematics uh but but then when i took a datacom course i got kind of interested in networks and and um, and with networks and and systems all there i mean there's always an aspect of uh, security or cyber security as well so anyway I, I started programming and then i started to work as a system administrator and uh, and most of my colleagues there they actually also studied programming so we were a lot of programmers that did other things than programming i mean we <laughs> we we did basically system administration i thought that that was kind of weird and i had good contacts with the university so I, I I started i mean one of the first uh, educations in in sweden that uh, that yeah, educated the system administrators and network administrators. And uh, um, yeah, I mean, now you can study that and it's a, it's a basic applied uh, role in uh, that, that you can that you can study in a lot of universities in Sweden and also abroad. I think actually a little bit more here in Sweden still. But um, and and uh, after that, I also started some master program in uh, in cybersecurity, 
when I came here to Jönköping, uh, we had already one of these networking programs and I found a role there and uh, we developed it. And yeah, we actually, the, the bachelor program here that is called Networks um, Infrastructure and Cybersecurity is one of the most so sought after programs in, in Sweden, mm -hmm. uh, but it's a bachelor program. And uh, yeah. obviously there is an, a need for our students to apply for uh, a master uh, after taking that program so so we saw kind of a need but uh, obviously we open uh, open it up to i mean sweden and the rest of the world as well as a, as a master program and and if i look at it uh, um, i mean we would like to have more students that connect to i mean our research group and do projects that, uh, i mean finding projects for instance that uh, that relate to to what we are doing and I mean, possibly also for finding PhD students and uh, and so on, but uh, but I mean, here in 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 Jönköping, I also do other things. Uh, I mean, probably around sixty percent of my time I work uh, with research. So I my my topic is um, I mean, right now I'm doing a project um, that is funded by the Swedish Civil Contingency Agency. So they run big part of uh, how cybersecurity should be organized in Sweden. You could say. Um, and um, yeah, so I work with how tool support can enable information classification in a better way. So that would be the step before the risk analysis. You identify information and you value it and you see how much it is worth for an organization. And then you take that information to the risk analysis. And then after that, you select your security controls, like in what, what ways are you going to protect your information? Teaching wise, I teach, um, I mean, actually, I don't have so much teaching. I, I teach some final projects because also being a program manager takes some time. And I'm also quite involved in internationalization because I like internationalization a lot. So I, I'm responsible for that in the subject area of uh, computer science. And I also have some central role here in uh, the School of Engineering uh, working with internationalization. Okay, so quite long answer maybe, but, no, uh, no, but uh, that, that kind of shaped what yeah. <laughs> why I work with this. Yeah. Uh, so uh, my follow up question was actually a little bit related to you started to actually answer some some bit part of it. What is cybersecurity and what how can um, how can you define its importance in the age of fourth industrial revolution? Yeah, that is uh, it's not an uh, easy question because I mean if you're an academic. Uh, to answer what is cybersecurity, I mean, it's it's complex because cybersecurity, like the definition of cybersecurity, um, I mean, we will discuss it actually in, in the two first courses in the study program. We start with a cybersecurity overview course uh, that kind of, I think, introduces what cybersecurity is. But from the beginning, I mean, a lot of people have talked about information security and the definition for that is normally that we... I mean, it's the means that we take to preserve confidentiality, integrity, and availability. So cybersecurity is very closely related to that. And there are even some definitions that uh, that are exactly the same. I mean, that you preserve confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Um, um, but uh, normally, maybe you make some kind of distinction. I mean, cybersecurity traditionally is not, for instance, protecting information that is on a paper, but normally it's a little bit more technical but today we just say cybersecurity for everything it's like yeah. a, it's kind of a popular word so it also includes many other types of uh, security you could say but we try to to i mean follow the definitions fairly well so we see cybersecurity as something a little bit more technical and i guess we will maybe get back to that uh, later on Absolutely. as well but uh, but uh, anyway i mean uh, a big part of your question is about uh, i mean how it affects things and I, I think i mean technology moves in in all kind of sectors i mean it moves in 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 manufacturing for instance uh, and 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 when we say the fourth industrial uh, revolution we normally mean that we add things, we digitalize things, we add connectivity. I mean, mm. we add networks and we add sensors that uh, that are embedded, for instance, in machines, and then we hook them up uh, to the internet or to some network at least. 
And we also have automation and all these kind of things are dependent on cybersecurity. I mean, cybersecurity is just like economy. It is something basic that you need to adhere to in, in, in some way. But I mean, if I should exemplify it, I mean, increased connectivity is, of course, one of the things that are very important. I mean, we have all these devices, systems, platforms and so on. And we get a lot of benefits from it. But at the same time, we also get new attack surfaces for cyber criminals to find uh, a way in. But everybody of you probably know that we also like to collect a lot of data. I mean, we have big data uh, mm -hmm analytics, we have AI, we have monitoring and so on. And organizations, they are kind of collecting more and more data and and um, protecting this data is of course critical to organizations. And some of this data could be, I mean, intellectual property. Mm -hmm. So so it has a, a lot of value for organization. And I think one, one aspect that I am personally, I mean, from a research perspective, more interested in is when we add new technology, it also means that, um, I mean, somehow we, we have operators that operate machines, but if we hook them up to the internet, it doesn't mean necessarily that they have so much education for it from a cybersecurity perspective. And there are quite many studies that, that highlight the fact that operators normally have quite low um, educational levels. They, mack, they might lack... Uh, you could say general cybersecurity awareness, uh, and that of course makes it even worse in in uh, such a setting. So it could be that operators are more exposed than other groups of uh, employees. But then we have also seen, I mean, uh, I, I guess it is the same uh, abroad, but in Sweden we have seen quite a few new threats in the last years, and we have also seen more incidents. Uh, and partly it has to do with, um, I mean, when technology advances, so so do also cyber threats. I mean, the criminals, Absolutely. they are more sophisticated. They use, I mean, they are more financially motivated. Uh, we have better malware. We have maybe more skilled phishing attacks uh, as a mm -hmm. part of social engineering, for instance, that mm -hmm. target organizations and critical infrastructure and so on. So, I mean, the threat landscape itself is also increasingly difficult. And then there are the things that I personally think are quite boring. I mean, regulatory compliance and so on. We have a lot of new standards and regulations that we need to comply with. But many of those also affect uh, the cybersecurity work and, and they are very important. What kind of demand is there for cybersecurity professionals? So I can imagine uh, the way you have described it, there must be a huge demand on on uh, such profession. Yes, um, I mean, I I participated in a conference uh, just last uh, summer by ISC two. I mean, the International Information System Security Certification Consortium, and they say that right now, ninety five percent of all companies that have fewer than one hundred employees, they have no security professionals uh, at all employed. So just just wow. to kind of bridge that gap and get cybersecurity professionals into those organizations will require a lot of people. I mean, really a lot of people because the companies that are fewer than 100 employees, it's it's really the vast majority of all companies. It's actually quite few companies that are big companies, like 99, something percent approximately of all companies are, are small companies. And um, they also said, I mean, this conference was in the UK and they showed some statistics that in the UK, they lack more than 56,000 security professionals. And uh, I mean, if we look in Sweden, for instance, the, the Swedish Civil Continuance Agency just had a report uh, that they wrote together with the armed forces of Sweden and the Swedish police. And they said that, I mean, there's a large scarcity of uh, skilled people in, in cybersecurity, that we have quite a lot of knowledge, but we don't have enough people. So, I mean, there are not enough people studying cybersecurity. Uh, um, th there are some, there is a lot of numbers floating around, but in 22, they said that uh, globally, there were like 3.43 million people in this domain that was uh, missing. And it is also an area that is uh, kind of growing. And I think, I mean, maybe one of the important things is that the threat landscape has kind of deteriorated in the last years. Uh, I mean, we have had this 
war in Ukraine and tensions between uh, Russia and the Western world and so on. And I think that that has that has really put the finger on cybersecurity in uh, in many ways. And we have seen in Sweden, it was just in the news yesterday that uh, one of uh, um, one of the Swedish municipalities uh, um, got affected by ransomware uh, just oh. just yesterday. And uh, I mean, two weeks ago, one of uh, one of the large IT consultants in Sweden was targeted, and uh, yeah, that affected several government agencies, and uh, and there are still companies that are affected by this ransomware attack. So so the threat landscape is uh, also more challenging. Um, that of course increases the demand for professionals uh, as well. Uh, can you give some examples of industries where the need for cybersecurity professionals is extremely important? I think uh, I mean, like I said before, cybersecurity is a bit like economy that you that you need it uh, everywhere. So so I think all sectors kind of need cybersecurity or most at least. But I mean, if we Take some examples. I mean, healthcare is one of those. Uh, I mean, healthcare organizations, they have started to hook up machines. It's just like the manufacturing, but uh, instead it's uh, medical equipment that is being hooked up to, to the network. And um, and um, in healthcare organization, of course, we also store vast amount of sensitive patient data, medical records. It could be insurance information, a lot of personal identification viable data um, and of course protecting that data is uh, extremely important we also have all kind of tech firms uh, i mean software developers uh, cloud services that i mean all these kind of services are in constant risk of cyber attacks uh, one one area where i think there will be quite a lot of demand coming up in the coming years is everything that has to do with critical infrastructure in europe we are tightening the screws a bit uh, from a leg legislative uh, perspective. So, um, I mean, power plants, let's say, uh, oil refineries, uh, water treatment facilities, all these kind of things that um, um, that have equipment that is connected mm -hmm. to networks. Uh, I mean, they are vulnerable. And uh, yeah, not only could you disrupt operations, but in, in this kind of... Uh, facilities you could also cause environmental damage or even uh, endanger public safety for instance we talked about the manufacturing sector i think that that those are also companies that need to hire cybersecurity people but i mean we could talk about airlines shipping yeah, company absolutely. logistics firms public transportation or i mean why not even our own sector i mean we are yeah. in, in the educational yeah. sector yeah. We also need uh, cybersecurity people. I mean, we collect a lot of yeah. sensitive data about students, faculty. Uh, we do research. We need to to protect that data that is uh, that is being collected and uh, and stored. But, but but do you think the industries have really understood the importance of it? To really, I mean, like you said. There is such a, a shortage of the skill set. Maybe it's also about the organizations really haven't identified that they really need this. Um, yeah, no, I think uh, in the, I mean, this kind of ransomware attacks that have happened now in the last uh, months and in the last years, uh, I think that 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 is uh, awakening a lot of people. Um, mm -hmm. And I mean, you see increasingly many ads that they are looking for people, but it's like we talked about before. It's not so easy to find people and. And sometimes you have people that maybe, I mean, you have studied some cybersecurity, but cybersecurity is also something that, I mean, it takes time to to really master it in a in a in a good way. I mean, you need some some experience. So how how could how can you um, describe our school of engineering, and what what do you think that makes it unique for our prospective students to come and be part of our school of engineering? Yep. So, um, I mean, we are quite big in, I think we are one of the country's biggest educators of uh, engineers, I mean, on university level. Um, we focus on on a few areas. So I think that it, it's quite good, I mean, that we don't try to cover everything. We don't have degrees in, in, in uh, all kinds of subjects. I mean, we, 
we do product product development materials manufacturing supply chain logistics uh, construction engineering and um, and I, I think it's funny we have a quite unique program in uh, lighting science uh, that i mean i think that's that's nice with architecture and and, and so on but uh, if we look at, i mean in in computer science uh, we do have a lot of things i mean we we focus more specifically on embedded systems like iot and stuff like this we do software development like mobile development software engineering web development of course we do ai have a big group in that uh, graphical design networking system administration security and so on but uh, what makes us uh, unique i mean you can study some of these subjects in in a lot of universities but i think one thing that maybe sets us apart a little bit is that we have quite good relations with companies mm -hmm. and uh, and I mean, the School of Engineering, I mean, we have been awarded some some international accredi accreditation for for our way of working with uh, um, companies and how we are collaborating with them. And I think that that is, uh, I mean, one important thing. And uh, before coming here to Jönköping, uh, I I had not been in a place where we had industrial placements, but then coming here and I, and, and I have seen it uh, uh, I think it works very, very well, and and it's appreciated very, very much by the students, uh, mm. but also for the companies that find their next generation to to hire, so to say. Yeah. Another thing that I think is uh, very nice here in in Jönköping, um is that we are very much an on campus university. Mm. So we have a we have a lot of students on campus. We have a mandatory student union, and I think that is quite a nice thing. It makes yeah, our campus quite lively. We have a lot of activities for the students that are organized by the students. Mm -hmm. And uh, since I work with internationalization, I also have to say that at least in Sweden, uh, we are very known for our internationalization. Uh, both, I mean, we have a lot of incoming students, but we also have good numbers in outgoing students. So that, of course, adds an additional touch with, I mean, international students uh, on the lively campus, so to say. Absolutely. So, so yeah. Well what is what is our aim with the design of this degree? Are we trying to solve um, I mean you you mentioned a lot of different industries, but are we trying to what, what are we trying to achieve with our education um, at um, at our school? Yep. I mean, it's a good question because um, I mean, in short, you could just say we try to fill the competence gap that exists. So we had a lot of discussions in in our group that uh, that developed the program, and we had, I mean, really a lot of discussions if we should focus it on something specific. Uh, so I think one thing that Jön Schöping or the School of Engineering is quite famous for is that we have quite a lot of connection with manufacturing industry. And that is partly because there is a lot of manufacturing industry in the surrounding area in this part of Sweden. So there's a small lot of small companies that, yeah, I mean, there is a lot of manufacturing. So, so that could have been a natural part for us that we, for instance, yeah, specialized on uh, critical infrastructure or cybersecurity in manufacturing. But um, I mean, we had I mean we had many discussions. So I myself, I mean, I'm I'll, I I'm kind of attracted to um, security where where we have humans in the loop in some mm -hmm. way. But I also have a management of information security background. But there are already, I mean, some of those programs in Sweden, there are also some programs that focus even more on the fundamentals of cybersecurity. So for instance, if you uh, would like to develop new protocols or encryption algorithms and so on, I, I don't think that our probably, I mean, our program would probably not be the best. So we try to place ourselves somewhere in the middle of this. So I mean, we have the, the, the less technical programs and the really technical programs, then we try to play, place ourselves, I think, in the middle. What we also try to do, I think, um, is we try to apply it a bit more. I mean, we try to have an applied program that give, you could say, broad knowledge about uh, cybersecurity. But I think one important aspect of it is that since it is master level, what we try to do is that we try to take somebody with a computer science background. So for instance, if you are a programmer, we try to enhance and add cybersecurity to your skill set. Mm. So if you have a software engineering background, you would add some cybersecurity and then that would in turn open up a new set of career paths and 
hopefully also make you a better developer that could consider new aspects. Mm -hmm. And the same if you have a networking background or a system administration background or something like this. So, so I think, I mean, that is in short what we try to, to achieve. And the courses also kind of reflect that, that we give um, the broad palette of uh, cybersecurity. Uh, you mentioned about industry placement course. I uh, yeah, that's a pretty interesting um, uh, scenario we have at uh, School of Engineering. Yes. But how how closely is this program designed with industry, and what is the balance of research and application? Um, I mean, we try to be. I guess you could say that we try to be as applied as possible, but mm -hmm. still, I mean, we have to consider that we are on a master level. So, um, I mean. In some way, everything that we teach, I mean, it's based on science somehow. So there is a research connection, but both I and I think all the teachers that, that are in the teaching group, we believe that you should not only study theory. I mean, you have to have some kind of healthy balance between theory and practice. You cannot master cybersecurity by reading a book. You need to sit yeah. down and you need to do things and you need to do labs and mm -hmm. uh, and so on. So um are, are there yeah. any internships or real projects that they re, they work on students yeah, i mean um, there are not any specific industrial placement uh, course in the study program because it's only one year and if we needed yeah. to add both a final year project and an industrial placement there would only be space for four courses so it's it's like impossible because mm -hmm. one of those courses need to be some kind of introductionary course to cybersecurity, and then you have three courses, and yeah. it just doesn't work out. Um, so if it would have been a longer program, uh, that would have been the case. But um, I'm, I think it's important to emphasize that, that the, the program is connected to an advisory board. Um, I, mean, I mean, we have more than 10 companies. Uh, it's consultancy companies and big employers in the area. So for instance, uh, I mean, the more international known, maybe Saab, Husqvarna, and so on, they, they sit in this uh, advisory board. And they provide they have provided feedback during development. And I mean, I will meet them um, now on Friday even um, to discuss uh, the latest um, developments. And, and that is not something that is only during development, but it's something that is a regular thing during the course of the, the year. So... When we develop the program and we present drafts, uh, we discuss content in courses and uh, we also, I mean, we have to discuss with the companies to ensure that the courses uh, are relevant. And I think one one important thing maybe to highlight is that uh, we, we aim to have one industrial connection in each of the courses in the study program. So I, I think that that is something that maybe set us apart from other programs, at least in uh, if I look at our uh, other universities in Sweden, so we have a whole set of companies that have agreed to help us, and and they show us basically how you translate theory into practice. So, I mean, if we take an example, uh, we have one course now on bachelor level uh, in cybersecurity that, uh, I mean, there is a small module about penetration testing, and there is a lot of methods that is described in the literature for how you perform penetration testing, but to have somebody that come from the industry and give a lecture in association to that and, and show how they translate it into practice and what they do is, uh, I think, very valuable. So that is something that we try to add, not for every single concept, but we try to include it for the major things in the, in the study program. Also, I think it's important, maybe, I mean, it's not only me that have worked uh, with security in in the reality outside of the university. I mean, I used to be a system administrator, but one of my closest colleagues, he used to work for the Swedish police with forensics. So he has written books and helped to develop methods for um, forensics. Uh, I have another colleague that used to be a network uh, administrator. Another one was a programmer. So I think all of us have been colored by working and not only reading books or that's, papers like you do in the in the university. That's really interesting, actually, Eric. Um, and, 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 I, and I think one one last thing, if I if yeah. I should say one more thing, is that 
I mean, we are in the process of signing an agreement with uh, ICS2 uh, as the first university in Sweden. So we we are kind of aligning the study program against the CISP certification. So uh, it is the certified information system security professional. So we are not doing the certification as a part of the study program, but this alignment kind of alleviates the certification for those that would like to take it, uh, I mean, after the studies. Oh, wow. Um... Are, are there any simulations uh, that we have designed uh, within this education? Uh, could you give some examples if we have? Yeah, I mean, everything that we, everything that is hands-on, I mean, we, we build it around real world scenarios and uh, we like to use some services. For instance, Try Hack Me is, uh, is quite, I mean, our students think that it is fun. It's uh, flexible. We we use it in other courses, uh, and we have had good results. Uh, it's adaptable, so that um, I mean, there are different levels from beginners to experts. And once you're enrolled in that, you can do as many exercises as you want as well. But we also have a we have a big lab. Um, I mean, just a couple of uh, rooms down from my office and. Uh, yeah, there we have, uh, I mean, we are like a Cisco Academy and and our bachelor programs is built partly on, on Cisco, but we also have other relevant uh, vendors from a cybersecurity perspective in the lab. And we try to make a, um, a deal about not only using uh, one brand, but actually use different brands uh, throughout mm -hmm. the, the, um, the studies. Uh, coming back to our teaching pedagogy, uh, yes. how do we inspire students to achieve the best results and gain upper hand for, from competition? And I can I can hear already from your uh, answers that we have a lab, we have simulations, we have industry contacts. So all of yeah. that, uh, I guess, helps with this, right? Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, I think the most important thing is that we provide some kind of real world relevance, because I think that if you have companies coming in and you do things that that are related to what is happening outside of the lab rooms uh, that is I think very important for inspiring students to have the kind of practical value of the skills and knowledge that is uh, being taught I think another part is that we we try to promote um, collaboration teamwork so, I mean, the students can learn from each other. It's not only from, from us. I mean, we have our, I mean, we don't know everything. And uh, um, like, like I said before, that, that that you could have different kind of backgrounds coming in also um, means that you could learn different things. Yeah. Uh, so we try to, I mean, we try to have a supportive in, and I don't know what you could say, inclusive classroom culture. It's an important thing. And I think... Coming back to what we talked about really in the beginning, this is about being a campus education uh, that is classroom led, uh, mm -hmm. I think also stimulates this. And and then I think we have quite, I mean, I like to work here because we have a nice team of teachers and we interact a lot with the students and we have lab sessions that are a bit more, you could say less in less formal than, than having lectures. I mean, you sit down and, and talk and you can make... Uh, jokes and I mean interact more and yeah. I think that that also or hopefully at least I I, I hope that it kind of de-dramatizes the studies uh, a little bit and I think also this try hack me I mean it's a it's a good concept and there are so many different labs that you can do or exercises that you can do so I mean if you're in if if you would like to gain an upper hand uh, then I mean, do more exercises. There is no mm -hmm. limit in in, yeah. in 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 a way. I think. Last question, but the most important one, I think. Uh, right. How do we connect our students with the industry after they have graduated? Do we have any forums or activities where they get connected with them to find opportunities? I'm just thinking about one contact you mentioned that we our board is made up of uh, people from industry. So maybe, yes. uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean that is um, that is one important uh, part of it. But we also do have, I mean, the the career fairs that uh, that we have in the School of Engineering. I think they are very impressive. I mean, there are so many companies coming here, more than a hundred companies every year. Um, that um, 
that, that come to try to to recruit uh, I mean um, students. I mean we also do have alumni networks. Uh, I mean we used uh, yeah LinkedIn uh, for for that uh, to keep uh, track of uh, old students and uh, also a group for alumni that they can post things in. But um, I think that the industrial partnership uh, that we have in the advisory boards and, and, and so on is important and have the companies coming in because then you, you also meet the companies. Yep. Absolutely. Thank you very much, uh, all right. Eric. It was uh, really nice uh, to get all these answers on the questions. So what we can do is we can open the house for Q&A session now. Um, and please, people, um, try to ask your questions. I can already see that we have few uh, already there. So the first question is, uh, what is the difference between cybersecurity and forensic, forens for, uh, sorry, for, forensic cybersecurity? Uh, when the cybersecurity department begins uh, as MSC? Um, I mean, I would say that uh, forensics is just a part of cybersecurity. It is, it's, it's a, it's a part of cybersecurity. Then, then the other part I, I don't understand when the cybersecurity department begins with an MSC. I don't know what the. Yeah, what... I think, um, um, yeah, um, maybe he's trying to ask if um, uh, we try to w when exactly maybe we try to teach forensics cybersecurity uh, within the program. So. Sorry, uh, I think uh, the uh, what I understand is maybe he's or he or she is trying to understand when we exactly teach this uh, during the um, um, length of the program. Ah, okay. I mean, we have a uh, forensics module both in both in our bachelor program uh, and in the master program. So there is a part that is about uh, um, forensics. Uh, there are two courses. Uh, that uh, that that um, they are not taught uh, at the same time, but um, one thing, uh, one one of those courses um, is followed by an by an other course. So, um, in the fall, you study one course about uh, ethical hacking and penetration testing, and then it's followed by a cybersecurity operations and uh, incident uh, response. And uh, forensics is uh, is a part of that. Yeah. Uh, there is another question. I want to ask if it's possible to get a full scholarship for master's in cybersecurity. I have my bachelor's in information system and cybersecurity. Uh, I can I can just uh, answer that. Uh, we yep. do um, have scholarship uh, in place uh, that you need to compete for, uh, but that is uh, just 30% on your tuition fee. Um, so, uh, we don't have anything more than that, uh, but you can. Everyone is welcome to apply for it, and that's uh, uh, based on your, um, you know, bachelor grades. That's based on your motivation letter, and uh, you might be interviewed. So there are different kind of criteria around that, and you can find all of that information on on our web, or you can send us an email on study at ju I can I can leave the email address at uh, um, the chat function as well. I heard uh, there are some challenges to exp expense with Swedish language. Okay, um, well, uh, um, maybe um, since this is a technical education, I think uh, you might not face so many uh, challenges of Swedish language, right? I mean, Eric, if uh, um, students- No, I mean, the big, uh, the big yeah. employers in IT, yeah. if you look here in the area, many of them work with English as the, as the as the language, I mean, we have a lot of students that uh, that come from other countries that that have gotten a job. There might be some some companies where it is more difficult. Uh, for instance, if they would work with defense and so on, depending on which country you come from, it could be it could be problematic. Yeah. Uh, I'm a foreigner, and part of university admissions requirement for my nationalism. I don't have this education background besides an an IT degree. Because of this case, will you because well, um, I think uh, the best course of action here is um, I would again leave the email address at the chat function. Send us uh, an email with your transcript. I can look at it and then I can come back to you. Yep. 
in general, I mean, uh, you need uh, a degree in informatics. I mean, yeah. as, that is a prerequisite for the program. So, so uh, law, for instance, wouldn't wouldn't uh, work. Yeah. Uh, what, what are the teaching tools? Is there a uh, paper filling or uh, research? What, what uh, I don't understand the, yeah. the question. It, yeah, I mean, I think, uh, oh yeah, okay. Maybe um, um, he's trying to ask if we have to do a thesis uh, in the education. If there is a thesis. Yeah, what, what yes. are the teaching tools? And then uh, is there a thesis uh, which they have to do, I think? There is a, there is a thesis in the, in the end of the study program. And uh, that should be somehow research related. I mean, you need to yeah. um, have a research question that you answer by your thesis. And, and that, can that it, relates to, I mean, something that is research related. Can, can it, and then can teaching it tools, be... I don't understand uh, exactly. Yeah. I mean, we teach normally in the in the classroom. Um, I like think uh, more awkward. like uh, I think more like this the the question which, where we uh, discussed about the simulations and stuff. So maybe it's related to that. Uh, okay. So yeah, I mean, for instance, we use this trihackme that I mentioned. We we have um, um, I mean an environment with uh, um, networking equipment and and operating systems and so on. I mean, we use we use um, yeah. I mean, in networking, we use uh, Cisco equi Cisco equipment, uh, Fortinet. We use uh, uh, Linux, Microsoft systems, and so on. If that is um, an answer. Uh, well, one question is: um, What are the most common cybersecurity threats facing businesses today? <laughs> Come to the cybersecurity overview course, and I will answer it in very much in detail. <laughs> yeah. Um, do I qualify to enroll for uh, with a bachelor's degree in information systems? Yes. Yes. Uh, is the cybersecurity program open for winter 2025? Yes. Uh, winter 2025. 2025. Uh, what do you mean with winter? That we yeah, start exactly. in January? Or... I, no, yeah. I, I'm confused about that. So I think they are thinking maybe we, we begin in autumn, um, late uh, like uh, August. Yes. So if you think that's winter, then maybe you have found the answer, but we only have one session a year that begins in late August. Exactly. So you start in uh, end of August and then you end in uh, beginning of June. Yeah. yeah. Uh, for an international student, what student profile has more chance to get an admission? Again, I mean, it's hard to answer your question unless or until we have seen your documents and uh, admissions have um, looked into through your prerequisites and everything. So uh, if you're not sure, and if you would like us to give you some kind of um, reflection on your documents, you can send us an email. I didn't do anything IT in bachelor's, but I have worked as IT supporting large organization. Would I be considered for a master program in cybersecurity? I mean, there is this um, writing that uh, or the equivalent, I mean, that you have a bachelor or the equivalent, but but um, I don't know. It's not me that is uh, uh, valuing this, but I would say probably not. Yeah. Um, what, what I understand is I think some part of the um, um, prerequisites can be considered through your experience, but you still need to have some relevant courses already in the field. If you don't have anything, then it it's almost like impossible to fulfill through your experience. Yep. Um, so, yeah. I think I think one important part, I mean, about being in the academy is not only the knowledge that you that you that you get from, I mean, reading a book or working with a system. I think there are other other things that you need for taking a master program that you should have studied, like, for instance, uh, writing skills and uh, uh, methods and and so on. I mean, to be able to read a paper and translate that into a few sentences uh, when you reference something, for instance. Great. Um, any more question, guys? Yes, I have certification with Microsoft and Cisco. Um, yep. Is that a good thing for starting this education? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. 
I think uh, some of our students that come from the bachelor, they, they also do this um, uh, certifications. And um, I mean, it's, uh, it's good. It doesn't replace something else, but the more IT you know, and the more foundations you have, the better it is for, um, yeah, for the program, I guess. I have a bachelor's degree in electrical uh, electronics engineering. Do I qualify for admissions? Um, the the um, if you I don't want to say too much about the uh, about yeah. the admission process because I really don't know everything. But the formally it is uh, that you need a computer science uh, or at least IT related degree to be a liable for a program. But I know that electrical engineering is quite close. I mean, uh, yeah. we have students that study embedded systems and I mean, there's like a, quite a big part there that is common together with the computer science. So, so I, I think maybe it would um, depend on how many credits that are within the subject area of IT. But I think the best to answer that would be the, the the admission. When does the transcript? Yeah, exactly. Um, I'm pursuing a diploma in network design and computer operation at Harvard University, with 60 credits in total, uh, 15 credits in cybersecurity, and 30 credits in computer networks, CCNA and CCNP. Will I be eligible to pursue this master's? But isn't that, uh, I know the people in uh, in Halmstad, um, mm -hmm. of course, um, and um, isn't that a three-year pro program? Because if it is a three-year program, I mean, then you get a degree in something that is IT-related, and uh, then you could come and study here. Uh, the, uh, 60 credits in total, so it means that... Uh, so it's, it's only for, 60 credits. Yeah, so it's for one year of some kind of diploma education. Ah, uh, Okay. In network design and computer operation at Harvard University. So, mm, I don't know. I have <laughs> that would so maybe, maybe, also be maybe, a question. Yeah, for... you, you could send us uh, again. Uh, please email your um, um, you know information and what you're studying, and then we can check with uh, um, the department, and we can also check with admissions, and we can come come back to you on that. Can you tell me about the MSc program scholarship? Oh, well, we, as I said, we have 30% scholarship, uh, which is based on your academic merit. Uh, and uh, you, um, yeah, you need to also send us your motivation letter, a uh, few recommendation letters, and uh, then you are being evaluated among all the other students. So it's, uh, it's, it's, it's something that you need to compete together with the other students to get the scholarship, which is 30% max. I would like to get some reflection on my transcript if possible. Can you provide me? Yes, absolutely. I'm doing that right now because I'm, I'm getting a lot of these questions. Uh, so everyone I'm writing at in the chat, study at ju.se. Oops. I would like to get some reflection on my trans. Okay, well, we have already done that. Great. I think uh, we have answered all of the questions so far. Um, oh, well, another came in. <laughs> I applied for MSc in cybersecurity and I would like to know when the application is closing as I have not paid for the application fee. Well, uh, you can still pay for the application fee because we also have a local admission. That means that you can apply directly on our website. You can, uh, you do not necessarily have to go through the university admissions. If you have done that, uh, then you can follow the instructions there, but uh, you can also apply through our local admission which is applying through our website directly, which is www.ju.se. Yeah, uh, thank you very much. Um, uh, it was a, a really inspiring session together um, and thank you for your time. And thank you uh, all of the audience that have attended this webinar today. Uh, thank you for attending. And 
uh, I really hope that this might have changed your uh, perspective of how we teach uh, cybersecurity. Um, and uh, this could also maybe be a motivating factor for you to really come and join us uh, at this education. We also have a pathway school. Um, I mean, in case if you're missing your English levels uh, to begin this course, that could be fulfilled with our pathway school where we teach English. Uh, so you can also check on that. Uh, so those kind of missing um, criteria can be fulfilled by uh, some of our uh, support education we have at the campus. Um, well, I can take these last two questions because uh, we still have some time left. I'm uh, unfortunately I did not submit my CCN and Microsoft certifications with my application. Will I still be considered for the MSc? Yes, I mean, uh, we don't look at the certifications. I've applied already for the one year master's, uh, but still awaiting a response. Many thanks for this insightful view of the program. Thank you, George. And thanks. thank you, everyone. Thank you, Eric. And all, right. all the thank best. You. Bye bye. Remember, guys, sorry, last thing. Uh, this session is being recorded, right? So we are going to put the uh, video on our YouTube channel. So don't forget to subscribe our YouTube channel so you can uh, shoot you so you don't miss any of the videos we upload there. All the best. Bye bye. All right, bye.